Now, in terms of taking advantage of this new industrial technology, the world leader was Prussia, the country that eventually took over the other German states to create the German Empire. And why was Prussia more effective than others in taking advantage of industrial technology? In part because it had started so far back. It was not even dominant in the German states where the, where the superpower was the Habsburg Empire, Austria. That was the, the dominant German-speaking state of the early 19th century. But Prussia had something that Austria did not have. They had a tremendous military bureaucracy, the famed Prussian general staff, which by the uh, middle of the 19th century was led by General Helmut von Moltke. Now the Prussian general staff was one of the great innovators in warfare in the last several centuries. They came up with so many of the practices which are still standard in defense departments all over the world. They came up with war plans, which they drew up war plans in advance of a conflict, and then when the conflict actually broke out, they simply took the war plans down off the shelf. They came up with war games so that they could figure out how a conflict would go before it actually broke out. They came up with staff rides uh, where they would take officers over a battlefield of a previous war and talk about how it had gone and try to learn lessons and apply them for the future. It came up with departments that specialized in mapping, in intelligence, in logistics, in railways, in deployment timetables. They figured out how to use industrial technology to mobilize reserves by telegraph and by railroad. The true genius of the Prussian general staff was that it was collective. It was not depending on the genius of a single individual like an Alexander the Great or a Caesar or Napoleon. It was designed to harness many individuals and bring them together in an effective bureaucracy. These military intellectuals and one of the other things that made Prussia so effective was that even though Prussia had a tremendously successful and learned staff that was running its military, they also understood that you could not command from the top every little thing that happened on the battlefield. Von Moltke, the great chief of the, of the general staff, said no plan of operations can look with any certainty beyond the first meeting with the major forces of the enemy. This was basically uh, a, a, a Prussian way to, to, to put the insight that, that the great boxer Mike Tyson later expressed as, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. The Prussian general staff in the 19th century understood that you had to decentralize, you had to give uh, very broad mission type orders and to allow individual commanders to innovate, to exercise their own judgment. And so they came up with this brilliant concept of combining a larger plan of operations, which had many contingencies within it, but also allowing individual officers on the spot of action to make their own decisions and to figure out how best to proceed to implement the plan. The Prussian general staff also developed what for a time anyway became uh, its secret weapon. A bolt action rifle, the needle gun. Which all Prussian infantry had as their basic firearm by 1866. This enabled Prussia to harness the Industrial Revolution in a way that other countries, including Austria, were not. Now, the, the Battle of Konigratz, which was fought in what is today the Czech Republic, was fought in 1866, the climactic battle between Austria and Prussia for control of Germany. This was one of the German wars of unification and the Prussians won it essentially because their military bureaucracy was superior to Austria's. The Prussians were able to mobilize and transport 
200,000 men and 55,000 horses in 21 days by railroad. The Prussians understood that the needle gun, the bolt action rifle, would be the key instrument of their military power. And they had their soldiers practice with that rifle relentlessly, while the Austrians were still equipped with a much more primitive mini rifle with a bayonet. And so the Austrians were trying to win battles with bayonet charges, whereas the Prussians realized the way to win a battle was with rifle fire. And so very early on, you saw the imbalance of forces where in one of the early engagements, one Prussian company annihilated two Austrian battalions. In the battle that ensued, the Austrians lost 22% of their force versus only 4% for the Prussians. This was the battle that enabled the rise of Germany as the dominant power of Europe and a Germany dominated by Prussia and Prussia in turn dominated by its army and by its general staff. Now after the wars of German unification, uh, which concluded with the Franco-Prussian War in 1870, pretty much all of the states of Europe decided they had to copy the Prussian model. All of them acquired the machinery uh, that, the, that the Prussians had pioneered, in some ways even went them one better. Pretty soon machine guns and repeating rifles and barbed wire were added to the arsenal of every state in Europe along with bolt-action rifles.